Moving on then to the camera support end of things. Uh, start off by finding this part here, which is the camera bearing plate, and it's uh, 034 100 is the part, and take two 30 millimeter long cap head bolts and place them through these holes as axles for uh, the, the end bearings. Now, I've only managed to take one of these off of mine. The, the nut is, uh, <laughs> is, is refusing to come off on the other, so I'll just describe it as I go through. So first of all, place these axles through here, one for each side. Okay, and then take these parts here, which are two identical um, cylindrical seats, uh, both numbered 03260. And as before, press in a 5x16x5 five by by five bearing into this face, if you can see it there. And on the other side, press in a 20x27x4 20 by 27 by bearing. Okay, and once you have those bearings in place, you can simply add these to the bearing plate. You should press down and lock them in place with two <clears throat> M5 nuts over the at the end of the axles, like so. Next fine part, 35100, <clears throat> which looks like this, and screw in a 31.5 millimeter diameter with a 12 millimeter diameter hole uh, rose plate like this. Now I provide in the parts plastic versions of this uh, of the same dimensions uh, but really the metal ones work far better and they come with these screws as well uh, as a set. Um, the plastic ones just wear too quickly and you can't print them as fine as you can print the metal ones and be effective. So I would definitely go for the metal ones uh, by choice. So you screw in a rose plate on this side of this part and on the other side you press home an M8 uh, nut into the hole here. Okay. Now what we do is we take this part <coughs> and it goes on the back of here. So, you should just press home and take four 20 millimeter long low profile bolts. And there are four holes <clears throat> in the plate on this side. Place those through those holes and tie those two parts together. So, now we can take part 36 100, this piece here and you can screw on the partner rose plate onto this side through the, the holes. Okay, and then we can attach that to this part here, which is 37 100, using two 40 millimeter, using two 40 millimeter cap head bolts like those. Okay, so that goes on there, and these bolts just run through this way. So now we can take the part 3990, which is our tightening knob, and run the M8 bolt all the way through that. And the M8 bolt is a hex head bolt with, um, which is 120 millimeters long. Okay, so you run that all the way down to the bottom of there. <clears throat> so all we need to do now then is take those two assemblies, attach the roses here, run this all the way through, through the two parts and into the M8 nut on the other end and that allows us to tighten or slacken that plate with the camera on it. <clears throat> You can turn around like that and very quickly tighten up in any position you require. So this is the camera screw we're going to add to this. Uh, they come in different sizes, so just be a little careful if you're buying your own. It's 19 millimeters across the widest diameter of the head here. 
and it's an 11 millimeters between here and the end of the screw and it's a quarter screw we're using for adaptability so that we can attach a camera directly to this or we can add a three quarter a quarter rather to three eighths uh, a camera adapter uh, so that we can attach the pan tilt head to it so this you can see in the bottom of this plate here there's the equivalent shape for the back of that that screw should just fit in here and drop down now what you can do is put a little bit of super glue in here first because when this adapter isn't on there's a tendency for this to fall out through the hole so I'll just do that just now add a little super glue in here drop our screw in press it down into place like so okay then we can take our adapter because I nearly always use mine with the pan tilt head I just put it on the top there okay so that is our completed camera end assembly so we can set that aside now ready for the final assembly of all the parts okay Okay, so this is the type of tripod I used for my jib. It's a Velbon DF61. Um, I used the Velbon uh, 60, but as you can see, the legs are pretty much identical. I think the only difference between this tripod that's still complete here and the one I used is that the feet uh, are rubber on the end of this one, DF61, and the original feet on the DF. Uh, 60 here with these screw in screw out feet now what you need to do is get rid of this foot anyway if, it, if you have a tripod with a screw foot like this it's useful to have the plastic block that all this is built into here and sealed in so, so don't try and break any of that out just take a hacksaw and cut that uh, bolt off flush so that you end up with something that looks like that effectively, yeah. Uh, you can see I've just hacksawed the, f the foot off the end there. Now to take these tripods apart, it's not it's, it's not too difficult. Uh, I'm not going to take this one apart because I don't need any more legs. Uh, but I will show you how that works. Hopefully, uh, on a typical leg. This bottom brace here goes into the back of the first locking mechanism. Now you'll find that there is a small plastic clip. Not sure how well you're seeing that. Okay, so there's a small plastic clip in there. Just take a screwdriver and pop that out and then get a, a screwdriver either side and you'll find that you can push these two side pieces of plastic together and then this piece should just slide out, okay? So in this kind of tripod, that removes this from the leg. Now at the other end of the leg, at this end, you can see, or well, I don't know if you can see, but there is, I'll show you here, there's a small square hole. Now that hole just goes down to the, the aluminium of the leg. And if you look at a leg that's already been removed, like this one here. Is it plainer on this one? Yeah, you can possibly see it on this one. There's a small square of uh, aluminium there that originally popped up into that hole and prevented that leg from coming out of the, the plastic. So all you need to do is push a small very hard to show this um, you need to get uh, something sharp, a screwdriver is what I used, and push that. And what you're going to do is push that piece of aluminium flat again so that this aluminium leg will just pull out of that socket here. And you do that for at least two of your legs and you have your jib arms. Once you've got your jib arms like this, two off, 
What you can do is start off by just opening them up a little bit so that the sections are away from the ends. Now this end of the tube here is now open and that would easily crush if we just left it like that. So what you have to do is print off this little, these blocks here, the two of them, for this open end. And they are the same profile as the aluminium section. And this is just to prevent the, the, the aluminium from crushing because it's pretty thin in section uh, at the end where it goes into the bearing seat. So you get these blocks and I think they are part number, yeah, part number 31, 03160, okay? And there are two of them and they should just go into here and slide in flush. Now you will have to let this leg come out a bit to allow that to go in, otherwise it will come to the very end of the, the tube here. If we take our motor drive here, and these are the sockets that these tube arms are going into, there's an M4 hole on the top of here. So I've put mine in so that the clamps pull down the way to open. You push that into its seat. There we go. If you push that into its seat and then you can either mark the hole into the metal here through this hole here using a sharp implement and just mark where that is. Then take it out and then drill using a three millimeter drill bit in through the metal and into the plastic block you've just inserted in the end of the tube. It's actually 11 millimeters from the end of the, the block here to the hole. Now you notice in mine I've got two holes, that's because I've, <laughs> I've built this so many times and I've adjusted the parts and uh, you should only have one hole and it should be 11 millimeters, it's the first one here. And there's a hole down straight through and into the plastic block below. So what we're going to do is if we put that back in there, you drill your hole and then we take an M4 grub screw, which I think is 12 millimeters long, like so. That grub screw goes into here. Now make sure it's not too tight going into that hole, otherwise it can split this plastic on this part here if it tries to force the plastic apart too much. Um, and once that's in, that grub screw should be able to screw all the way down and into the arm itself. And that just retains the arm inside its, uh, its socket like so, okay? So that's the first hole you need, which is a three millimeter hole um, to take the M4 grub screw. So once you have the hole at that end, before you actually uh, finally assemble this, um, if you have a look here, before the first uh, lock, locking mechanism, I have another hole. Now this should be a six millimeter hole. Now you don't want, when you drill this hole, for it to go through the part that's, that's telescopic inside there. So what you need to do is pull that out to its fullest extent, and now there's nothing in behind that hole. And the distance that hole should be in the center of the face of this leg. So the distance between the locking mechanism and the center of that hole is 30 millimeters. So six millimeter drill bit through there, make sure that this part, the telescopic leg is out of the way. Otherwise you'll end up putting holes through the whole thing that we don't need. So up here at the, the camera end on the thinnest leg, <coughs> we need to drill another hole into the face, the same face is this one and this hole is also a six millimeter hole and it needs to be 20 millimeters away from the end of the tube to the center of that hole okay so that's 20 millimeters from here to the center of that hole so to assemble our dynamic counterweight carriage which runs up and down the arm um, we need first of all to find parts 41 uh, 42 and 43, okay? 43 is those two um, sleeves, if you like. In the first part here, 41, so the first thing you need to do is using a soldering iron uh, through the center and just press in a small M6 threaded insert into to the top of this part here. 
Next thing we do is take one of each of these sheaths and just place that inside this part like so and it should just fit inside like that. In the other part you can also take the sheath, put it in and then take four uh, M5 uh, low profile bolts and this part comes together like so and then just drive these four bolts in Here's your four bolts. Now we can take our 100 millimeter long uh, camera Swiss plate and there are two holes in this flat face here and they should line up with two of the holes in the, in the Swiss plate like so. So take two 10 millimeter long uh, low profile bolts and those go one into each of these holes in the plastic. So next we need to find part 45 which is this turning uh, knob and take a 40 millimeter long M6 hex bolt, press it in there. You can add a little bit of super glue behind the head if you want just to make sure it stays where it's put and it protrudes from this side of the knob like that. So that goes into this hole here, into our threaded insert. And as we screw that down, you'll find that it pushes the inner sheath on the top there down hard against the metal armature, uh, thereby locking the carriage in place on the arm. So don't, don't thread it all the way in at the moment, just leave it loose uh, so we can slot it onto our arm. Now, one error I've made is pay attention when you put these sheaths in here. Uh, because they both have to make the shape of the profile of the tube and I've got one of them the wrong way around. So let's see, that should just pop out. Yeah, so if you take a look at these, you know, there is a flat face and a curved face. So the curved face matches the curved face on the tube and the flat face should be on the outside so that these two sheaths come together like so. Okay, so we've that the right way around this time and that's our tube. That should just there we go. <clears throat> slide onto the end of there and move freely up and down until we turn this knob which will lock it from moving on the track. Okay, so that is our counterweight carriage. Leave that on this arm uh, till we get to the next stage and we start assembling it all. Okay, for the other side of the, um, the weight carriage, the actual part that actually carries the weight, we're using a 120 millimeter long um, Swiss clamp like this one, okay? And you get in the kit uh, a 60 millimeter long countersunk uh, bolt with a hex on the end, okay? And the idea is that that goes through this way into the, the, the same side that the Swiss plate slides in and through the center hole like so. Then we can take our weight and the pattern for this will be with the files, um, but it's roughly a kilogram in weight and it's made from bar stock. That goes through the middle and we take part 44 and press in an M6 nut into the end of that part and then that just simply screws on. Now this is longer, it allows us, it allows us to this length of bolt allows us to put at least two of these dynamic counterweights uh, onto the arms. Um, but we don't want this obviously sticking out where it can, you know, do some damage. So we have a, a deeper uh, tightening knob for that. 
that goes on there and just simply tightens up and you can get, as I say, at least two weights onto there. But even with just one weight, which is more normal, you know, the knob does the job of not just tightening the weight on there, but also uh, preventing this from doing any damage to anybody when it's on the jib. Okay, finally, the exciting part where we start assembling the jib. So first of all, if we take our motor block, the lower arm, the one we put the counterweight carriage onto, and make sure that your buckles are pulling down to open up to close, okay? So this tube then should just fit inside here, make room for it, with the hole to the hole in the top of your part. That simply slides in there, and then we can drive our M4 grub screw down through the arm to hold that in place. And then we can take our upper arm and do exactly the same thing. Push that through. Through that to place. Okay, so the next step is to connect our fulcrum here uh, to the arms. Now before we can do that, we need to prepare a few other parts. We have parts 28 and 29, and these are the caps that are going to go on the front. Now there are two of those caps, and they're very similar. The top cap has the bird on it, and it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the bottom cap doesn't have anything on it, it's blank, like so, but it does have a, an extra place just on the edge there for a 6 by 2 millimeter magnet, okay, and that's going to catch the end of our locking mechanism, so that needs to go on the bottom one to catch the end of this locking mechanism, it snaps out. So we know, remember we already have a small uh, 6 by 2 magnet in the end of that mechanism, and that's going to connect with the magnet on here. So it's very important when you put those parts in that those two magnets actually, you know, you don't want them repelling, they need to attract. Very important point, otherwise it's going to do the opposite as intended. Now if you take a look at these parts you can see that I've got an orange piece inside a black piece here. Uh, for you this will all be one part, I've changed the design and now I'm printing this all as one part, so you won't have, you know, two different parts here. It'll look like this though, press the magnet in. Now the hole in the centre here is for this small M3 three cap head bolt and it's only about 6mm long. And you just screw that into that hole, if you can see that. So screw that into the centre. And screw it down until you just have about you know, about a millimeter, one and a half millimeters protruding from the part. See, you can just see the head there, just proud by about one and a half millimeters. And the reason that we're leaving it proud is that that head is going to go into this hole here. And what we don't want to happen is for that head to prevent this inner sleeve from sliding back and forward. Okay, we want it to stop this from moving, sliding back and forward along the arm, but we don't want it to go so deep that it prevents this inner um, slider from connecting. So likewise with the part with the bird on the end, no magnet on this one, but you have the same uh, M3 cap head with the same protrusion uh, in the centre of that part. Now. You also should print off and have ready this part 26 and it actually comes as two identical part 26's, my one's a bit broken. Um, but these are sheaths and these sheaths you put one in each of here. Okay, so if you look at your fulcrum this sheath goes in over the top of the bearings and just connects. Okay. So these sheets go identically into the, the face of the fulcrum support like that.
So all we have to do now is if we offer our arms up to our fulcrum support, and if we start with the top one here, that should go over the top, and we fix that in place with 50 millimeter low profile bolts. Okay, so here we can see our um, top plate's nicely in place, and our bottom plate exactly the same way, but remember the magnet goes down to meet with the magnet in here, so it goes that way around. Okay, so now it's time to connect our camera support onto the end of the uh, jib arms here. And it's very similar to the other end. You have two caps, like so. And this time these caps are absolutely identical, they're one piece. You drive in again the small M3 cap head uh, bolt, leaving it proud by about a millimetre. It can be a little higher this time because there's nothing sliding back and forward underneath it. And uh, both these parts have the same number and they come together. If I remember the number is, yeah, it's part 33. And the sheaths that go inside is part 47. Uh, so part 47 is these two uh, little sheaths. And these then go in here into the end of these barrel end supports and just it should go all the way along and press down there we go Okay, so the bearings are actually covered by that plate and it's the profile of the end of the, the, the rods. We want the knob to be out forward. So this is the top and this is the bottom. And this is the same, but this time we're using 40 millimeter long uh, low profile bolts. It should go into there. And it should be on far enough so that that little screw connects with the hole in the metal. And tighten them up. So with our jib completely assembled now, uh, we can move on to the exciting part of actually setting it up and seeing what I can do. But for that, we'll need a bigger space. Okay, so we've built our jib and it's time to give it its first test flight. Um, one thing I should mention before we go any further is you will require a reasonably sturdy video tripod for this exercise. The jib with its camera and possibly a pan tilt head and the counterweights could easily be over nine kilograms. So it needs to be capable of carrying at least that kind of load. Um, the one I use is a caver. Uh, tripod. There are many other makes out there. This isn't an advert for cover. It came with a very nice uh, metal fluid uh, pan tilt head uh, on it and uh, yeah you don't have to spend the earth. You know there are tripods out there uh, that will do the job very nicely for a reasonable sum. So let's get on. So we have our jib down here. Okay now it's reasonably compact. Reasonably but it is quite a weight. And we can mount that directly onto our tripod. Slacken off this screw here, okay, so that the base turns freely and just screw it down onto the base of our tripod, like so. Right, so, and this is where the little tightening bolt comes in, if I can find it, here it is here. You can just give it that last tweak onto the tripod. Come around this side. Once you go out where it was, you can just tighten it there onto the tripod and press it back in. Okay. 
And we'll leave that swaying freely at the moment. <clears throat> so the next step is we'll give it some length. Just move that out. Some length here. And we'll take it out, just an average distance. Now you might want to measure on each um, on each arm how far it is for your given camera system, what gives you the best results. <clears throat> uh, I haven't done that yet. I always should judge it by eye, but here we go. And then you can lock these in place and we'll just turn this so that the camera support is on the upward face like there. And so that's our jib. We've still got it locked here. So next, I'm go we're going to mount our camera and I'm using, in this case, just the fluid head from the, the tripod system. And we can just mount that one here, slacken it off so I can swivel the base. Tighten that up on there, slacken that off and allow that to come back. Tighten off the fluid head. So okay, so we can see that that's made the jib nose heavy. So we take our dynamic counterweight um, with its Swiss clamp, slide that on here roughly to the middle, clamp it up, and now it's tail heavy. So we can slacken off this whole assembly and just slide it to where it's approximately correct. That should be nice, we'll tighten it off there. And now we can just move up and down and it shouldn't return it should stay in the position that you put it. Okay, just like that. If you need any fine adjustments, you can leave this, this uh, orange knob alone and just use the Swiss clamp to just fine adjust the position of that weight back and forward. Now, I'm using my lighter camera on here, my A6000, um, because I'm using the A7 III I normally use to film this. Um, it is a case of you will have to find the best setup for your camera system because everybody will use a different weight of system. This system is going to dramatically change as soon as I put the uh, pan tilt head on it. It's another two kilograms on that end and we're going to need more weight on this end. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Okay, so once we have our jib reasonably well balanced, we can take our small uh, digital bird controller here, the compact one. And if we turn on, first of all, we should see the jib come down, find the first limit switch, and then come back to the uh, centre of the jib. It will then move again, as it's doing now. If you have a pre-recorded endpoint, uh, then it will move to that endpoint, ready to start playing. So I've already recorded an endpoint. The way you record an endpoint is you press the endpoint button here on the controller. We can then position the jib anywhere we want as the start point. Press that again to confirm it, then press our out point. It will go down to whatever it thinks is the current out point, which is there, but I can adjust that now to wherever I want it. I want it there. And hit out point again. And it goes back to the in point ready to start its move. Okay, so we'll just change, it will turn down, or we'll turn up our speed rather, make it about, I don't know, five. And then we can hit play. There we go. And I'm standing right next to the motor here with the uh, lavalier mic and I can't hear anything from the motors at all, nothing at all. If we give it some bounces, there's two bounces, hit play. Okay, so remember the two small magnets on the side, if I bring the jib around that way, when we're not using it, we can just put our controller on there just to keep it safe. The other feature we have on the, the jib is a hot shoe here, or a cold shoe rather, since it doesn't have any power going to it. And that is for, I have here my monitor, I can simply slide my monitor on there 
lock it off. Bring the cable up, plug it into the camera. Okay, so with my monitor turned on, I don't know if you can just see it there, I can monitor all my moves quite happily on the jib. I just hit play here. Okay, so with our jib, we can see that it's currently very tail heavy. So we'll get our camera and I'm just using the, the um, fluid head from the tripod for this, for the time being. We can take that and I can put it on the end of here. Make sure that's on properly. Up there. Now it's nose heavy, so we take our dynamic counterweight, the one with the Swiss clamp on it, and keep the, the knob at the top, and that should just slide on here. Like so. And we can use the tightening knob or the orange knob in there that you can see. We can slacken that off. And then we can move that back and forward until we find a rough balance point. Okay, so that's it roughly balanced there. Now what you can do as well is test it. It should stay in position wherever you put it. If you take it down, it should stay there. If you need to adjust or make fine adjustments, you can just use the the, the Swiss clamp and just move that counterweight back and forward on the Swiss clamp as required. So another feature here is we have a cold shoe mount on top of the fulcrum here. And this is where I can take my monitor system and I can just slot that on there. Okay. Plug the monitor into the camera. With the system level like that, I can turn it on and we should see it come down now and find its first limit switch. It hits the limit, comes back up to the horizontal and then moves on. If you have a pre-programmed endpoint, then it will then move to that endpoint, which I do in this case. So that's my pre-programmed endpoint. If I take our small digital bird controller here. Okay. I can go to endpoint and I can then just manually move the system to where I want it to start. Say there. Then pick our out point and it will go to my predefined out point and I'm quite happy with that so I'll just accept that. Goes back to the endpoint and all I have to do now is hit play when it's at home, and now off we go. Now we have all the, the same routines we have on the slider and the other parts of the kit. We have the 6K sequencer, we have time lapse, um, we have stop motion facilities. Uh, on the jib as well, if we stick with the jib for the time being, and Incidentally, this is the reason we have the two small magnets here, so that I can just strap that on there to keep it safe. But we also have here the ability to slacken this off and then turn this to say 45 degrees. Tighten it up there. And over here, we'll slacken this one off and make our camera level again. So now with that set up at 45 degrees and I've set, managed with my ball head to adjust my monitor to 45, 
I can just hit play. You have a nice smooth 45 degree move. I think that's a successful test. Okay, so if you want control of the pan of the jib, obviously, we have the Digital Bird uh, pan head, and that just screws onto our mount like so. Then we can take our jib. And to complete the system, we have the pan tilt head here. And we'll put battery in here. And what I'll do is I'll mount this under slung so that you can see it more easily. Power it on. We use the automatic mount feature. Okay, so the, with this setup, obviously we're very, very nose heavy. Um, if you unlock the jib here, you'll see we're way down on the front. So we take our second static counterweight and that screws into the back of the control box here. And that's what this hole's for. So that can go into there. And then we can just screw that down. Screw that in there so it's in there. Now when we release, we can just adjust here. Move the dynamic weight back until we get our balance. It's approximately right there. And now as I move the jib up, I can allow it to hold position wherever I want it to. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my end point. I'm going to have my end point down there is fine. But I'm going to move this around. So it's looking at you guys over there. Okay, that's my end point. Go to my out point. Out point is going to be around here. Bring that back around. Make sure it still faces yourself. That's my out point. Goes back to the in point. Then all I should need to do now is hit play. So I've just come to the end of uh, editing this video and realized with shock that it's one hour and 50 minutes long. So I'm going to divide it up into three parts uh, or four parts even. Now, um, if you've managed to watch all of this, then uh, you probably deserve a medal. Uh, I don't have any medals to give out, so I'm just going to give you some views of my messy desk, messy workstation. Um, all of these shots have been done with no post stabilization. Uh, that's not to say you will never need post stabilization on shots, but uh, it is a testament, I think, to, to just how good we've managed to get so far. Thanks for sticking with me. Happy building.